Hello everyone and welcome back to Futurama with Nerds. I'm your host Alex Billings. With me as always my friend and co-host Ryan Lecknoise. Hello. All right, and today we're going to be reviewing episode 405, Leela's Homeworld, which originally aired February 17th, 2002, and was written by Kristen Gore, which we've talked about before was Al Gore's daughter who worked on the show. Yeah. This is the only one she was the head writer for, but I guess she was a staff writer for seasons three and four. Which is interesting because, like, this is a pretty significant plot episode. Yeah, I was surprised this wasn't a David X. Cohen one. You would think it'd be like a Keeler or a Cohen sort of, like... It's a very important one to the the lore of like Futurama that they just gave for one person's one time. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it worked out. Yeah. She did a fine job. So this one opens with everyone at Planet Express and the professor announcing that Leela has been named orphan of the year from her old orphanarium and everyone's, you know, happy, but then he immediately rolls into it and the good news keeps coming. Here's my newest invention. And it's like this giant machine and he turns it on with this like big switch and it's got all these pumps and levers and gears and everything going and it pops out a little glow in the dark nose. Yep. And that's all it does. Well, that we see for now. Right now, that's all it does. They, uh, but they notice at the back that it's creating a whole bunch of toxic waste. The professor's like, so it makes a little bit of toxic runoff. You don't have to make a federal case out of it. And then Hermes pulls out his bureaucrat badge. He's like, actually, I do. He's like, you have to either dispose of this properly or pay me a bribe. Either way, it'll cost you $500. Bender's like, that's outrageous, professor. I'll take care of that toxic waste for $499.100. Which the professor admits he realizes is a ripoff. But he'll pay for the convenience. Yeah. I mean, I guess if it's going to cost him 500 either way. Bender's right there. Yeah. And at least this way he does get rid of that and it doesn't keep piling up because, I mean, Hermes was also right there yeah, for the bride. That's true. But yeah, we just see Bender basically just makes a hose and starts pumping it directly into the sewers. But we see some, like, spill around and it, like, erodes away everything it touches. Yeah, and they quickly remind us that mutants live in the sewers. Yeah, Penelope pops out of the, the sewers to like complain and the cops tell her to get back in there and she's like but he ruined my wedding dress and Bender's like honey that thing was ruined the moment it was put on you so we go to the orphanarium yep. for Leela's big ceremony and we have the uh the director talking about how he remembers when Leela showed up because he has a photographic memory and remembers every night but it shows she was like abandoned in a basket he picked her up and there's like a note and alienese and then she has like a little bracelet which we usually don't see but like it looks like one of those little medical alert bracelets yeah. but it's just got some more alienese on it which this one is actually like I guess the alien code three which has no translation Oh. Because I think I don't think it shows up very often. So I think it's it was never meant to be a translatable language, I don't think. Okay. It's just sort of like gibberish. You're just gonna throw symbols out in there. So I don't of think thing. they ever even say what the bracelet says. They talk about the note. They say the note at the end, but not the bracelet. Yeah, and so then he he brings her in and then Leela gives this motivational speech about how being an orphan made her better and like stronger and how she could do anything now because of that and you know, all the orphans get happy. And they're gonna put her picture up on the wall next to the other orphans that have won awards, which I took down all the other awards. So there's often seen in the background of news spots. Yep. Diligent flosser. Yep. Has tasted every McDonald's sandwich and successfully switched from heroin to methadone. What's incredible about this is this is Orphan of the Year. Yeah. Which means in previous years... Yeah, those were the best they had. But Leela was still successful. Even, <laughs> even when she was at the cryo lab, that means that tasting every McDonald's sandwich is more important than working at the cryogenics lab. Well, or being a diligent flosser. Or switching from uh, heroin, heroin to, to meth. meth. <laughs> is, is better than working at the cryo lab. Yeah, it's more important. Yeah. It's more inspirational for the other orphans. Yeah. Than just working at a cryo lab. Yeah. Let alone, I don't know how long it's been since Fry's been in the... Yeah, it's always ambiguous. I mean, there's been two Christmases or two Xmases. So that means when she was a captain, she still lost out to the heroin addict. Yeah. Yep. But we go back to Planet Express and Fry finds Leela crying in like the locker room. And he's like, if those aren't tears of happiness, please stop. <laughs> and she's like, just talking about how she was lying to the orphans that, you know, all she ever really wanted were parents. So they go for a walk to make her feel better. And she's like, I just wanted someone to like love me and hold me. And Fry's like, well, you're in luck. Because I'm a loving, holding machine. Also spanking. <laughs> She's like, that's not what I meant. She's like, sometimes I just look up at the sky and think my parents are out there on some planet looking down on me. And it's the camera's like panning up to the night sky. And then suddenly it pans back down, though. And you see in the sewer grate two cyclopses, which is basically the reveal that her parents aren't aliens, but are mutants. Which is a super weird reveal to do this early. So they talked about that a bit in the commentary. They debated whether or not they should reveal the parents to the audience now or later. They said ultimately they felt they could do better jokes if if the audience knew okay. and she didn't and it would just be much harder to hide and like not make it obvious anyways okay because like the rest of the episode is essentially like Leela's chasing these well the idea is Leela doesn't figures. know but we're supposed to know yeah right and again they said they debated it and they just felt this was ultimately the best yeah. the best option we'll never know because we obviously we don't get the alternative yeah 
And so Lilo's parents did appear way back, and I second that emotion in the background of a big crowd scene. Yep. But this is the first time they've actually been addressed, which again, just showing one of those little things of like how early they planned it out. Like they knew before they actually started the series that Lilo was going to be a mutant and not an alien. And then it took them four production seasons. Yeah, they got it in their last season. <laughs> so they got like, they almost missed it. They almost missed the big reveal. Yeah, one of the big ones. And yeah. if they would have missed it, think of all the fan theories that would have been online though, because people would have gone to that first episode and it would have been like, hey. Yeah. Like, and that probably, they probably would have gone on record and be like, yeah, you're right. We just didn't get around to it, but they got around to it. So that's nice. Yeah. So we see the next day, Bender's waste disposal business is doing well. And he's, it's now Honest Bender's waste disposal business, much like how he had Honest Bender's Orphanarium. Yep. But he's disposing of the trash from Free Willy 3, which is just a big dead orca whale. Well, you don't know that. I guess we don't know it's dead. You don't know it's an orca whale. You know it's a giant thing that looks like an orca. Yeah. And he's just stomping it through the manhole in the street outside of Planet Express. And Leela's like, Bender, stop. First of all, the sewer means will be mad. Second of all, everything else wrong with this. Yep. But Bender just doesn't care, so he keeps doing it. He's like, what's the matter? The mutants are down there, and we're up here. But then a bunch of the toxic waste spews out and, like, creates a big hole, and some mutants reach out and grab the three of them and pull them in. And then it just hard cuts to them, like, tied to, I don't know, a crane or something. Yeah. Over the mutagenic lake, which is all glowing now, and they're saying how Bender's disposals made it more mutagenic than ever, and it's brighter now so they can see how ugly they are, and, like, Penelope and Dwayne look at each other, and they're like, oh. Just great. (laughs) Means it was dark enough before that they could make out the shapes of people, but not actually see details. Yeah. Their punishment is they're going to dip them in the lake, which will mutate them. And they demonstrate with a rat that goes in as a rat and comes out as like a weird fish pig hybrid. Flying fish bat rat thingy. Yeah. They have a very aggressive mutation. (laughs) Yeah. They start lowering them down and they're all freaking out. And Bender's just like, wait, why am I screaming? I don't have DNA. We're going to beat you up afterwards. So he starts screaming again. (laughs) Yeah. But then, yeah, we see in the crowd two cloaked figures, which is obviously the parent. Yeah. But the mom yells out like, Taronga Leela. And Leela's like, what? Who's that? And they run up onto the crane and switch it. So it goes swinging to the side and they land on like the docks for the city instead of in the lake. And they run away from the crowd because the crowd's all angry. So they swim through the lake because they establish here that it won't affect them because they're already mutants. Yeah. Mutants can't get super mutated. Yeah. They don't get extra mutated by going in. Yeah. So they're coming after them. And then while they're running, Bender's like, wait, let's go in here. And he picks up Fry like a bat and uses them to break a window. <laughs> and they like jump in the window and the mob runs by doesn't see them, I guess. But then when they're in there, they realize there's all these pictures of Leela everywhere. A full timeline of her yeah. existence, pretty much. And she's like, this is so crazy. This is so, all the greatest stuff I ever flushed down the toilet. Those are some of my diary pages and my screenplay. And Fry's like, and also this letter I wrote you with all my feelings for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> like, why would that be flushed down the toilet? Yeah. And then the mob finds them again. And they're going to... Like, I think they might even say they're going to kill them now, but they're all angry. And yeah, the mayor's like, not just because I'm running for Supreme Mutant again. (laughs) And they all chant four more years. Yeah, we were going to go for the death penalty, but then the hooded figures come up again and they whisper something and then they get banishment instead. Yeah, they whisper to him and he decides to banish them otherwise. And Leela's just like, what's going on? And Bendis like, oh no, I never get to step back in this filthy place ever again. How dare you? Yeah, so they bring in an airship to take them back up, which is made of discarded Macy's balloon floats. Macy Parade, yeah. Yeah, Macy Parade's balloons. So they have like Bart Simpson and John Arbuckle and Underdog are the three they mention. Yeah, I think I saw Bullwinkle was in the side too. A lot of it's a gray mask, but you can make out Bullwinkle, I think. Maybe. I think there was another one, yeah. Yeah. But they go up and they they put out a plank to like the broken ladder to the manhole and Bender first gets up and he's all nervous because it's all shaky, but then he takes out a unicycle and he unicycles across instead of walking, no problem. Yep. And Fry goes and then Leela and they're climbing out. They're going to get out and Fry's out top of the manhole. And he's like, come on, Leela, we got to go. And Bender's like, here comes the bus. <laughs> We're going to miss the bus. <laughs> and then Leela just pulls the lid closed on herself, though, because she decides she has to figure out what's going on with those two cloaked figures. And Fry's like, what are you doing? And Bender's like, I'm getting on the bus. <laughs> But then Leela jumps down into the mutagenic lake and splashes in. And then you see the octopus head pop up and swim to the surface. She gets there, so it looks like she's mutated a giant octopus head. But she pulls it off and realizes she hasn't mutated at all. And she's like, it didn't work. And the octopus is like, it worked on me. I used to be a little blonde girl. And she like throws it back in. And then one of the, the mutant guards comes up. He's like, stop, I don't want to hurt you. And then Leela kicks him in the face. And he's like, I don't want you to hurt me either. And she goes running off into the tunnels. Yeah, she starts chasing after the ho- hooded figures. She's trying figures. to find them, yeah. And while she does that on the surface, yeah, Fry's gone back to the orphanarium and he's basically like, I need to find out everything I can. He's like, Leela's being crazy and I have to help her. I need to know everything. He's like, give me all the dirt you have on her. He's like, well, I don't have any dirt on her. It's like everything I had would just be a waste of your time. He's like, that's impossible because my time's worthless. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, I guess we have this note from when she was found, but it's in Alienese. So no one on Earth can translate it, which makes no sense because this is also the first alien language that's all over Earth. 
Well, yeah, here's the thing. I think they're making fun of themselves in this episode with that. Because they're like, hey, nobody can, uh, can translate this. And then later on when they get to professors, like, oh, I can only translate it into this language. Yeah, harder language. Nobody so. else can translate this one either, which, of course, the community did. Yeah. But there's the joke before Fry leaves that the... Uh, yeah, he's like, do you want any dirt on other orphans? And he's like, I don't have time for that. I'll have to come back for that later. <laughs> they imply, like, yes, I do want dirt on yeah. the other children. <laughs> yeah, later. Yeah. Yeah, they talked about how there was some cut stuff where there was like about how one kid was a bedwetter and stuff. But he goes back to the professor. Yeah, and he asks the professor to translate it. And he's like, I can only translate it to Beta Crypt 3 in an even more impossible language. And he's like, I didn't ask for a reasonable excuse. I should get busy. So then he goes to that big machine from the start. And he's like, how does this is your machine that makes noses? He's like, it does other things. Why shouldn't it? Which is valid. Like, yeah, why can't one thing do more things? Yeah. And so he puts it into translate. And then he's like, well, it's off to work. He's like, but there's no way to tell how long it'd take. It could take a minute or it could take 10,000 years. And then it dings and fries like, is it done? He's like, no, of course not. Two dings means it's done. And then I was like, ding, ding. And Fry's like, <gasps> and he's like, no, it's more rapid than that. Ding, ding. And Fry looks excited and the professor just shakes his head. No, <laughs> not that one. Yeah. We go back to the sewers and Leela's chasing uh, the hooded figures, I guess. And I she... mean, we can just say it's their, her parents. Like, hey, she's chasing her parents around. Yeah. But and then eventually it does work, though, for uh, Fry. Like the translation comes out and him, the professor, are reading and, you know, it cuts away. They're like gasping in shock. Yeah. And so Leela ends up chasing her parents into their house. Yeah. Into their house. And she starts like accusing them. She's like, what is this? Am I like some weird Truman show to you? She's freaking out. A and then... less funny Truman yeah. show or an even less funny Truman show. Yeah. And then she notices that her dad has, like, the same bracelet she had. Her mom has it. Her mom, you're right, on the tentacle. And then she, like, takes off her little wrist lojacimator, the wrist lojacimator. Yeah. There was a flashback scene before this implying that the, the parents... Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Okay, that was before. I was thinking it was after. Yeah, because the parents would say they would rather die than let yeah. Leela know she's a mutant so that she can actually live a life and not be stuck in the sewers with them. Yeah, we see Leela's, like, right after Leela's birth, and they realize that the only thing she has is the one eye. And the doctor even says it's, like, she declares her the least mutant mutated mutant ever yeah so they decide to pass her off as an alien and take her to the orphan area and then yeah they'd rather die because the mom leaves the note because apparently she has a phd in exolinguistics yeah but yeah this is important because the, yeah they without, agree they'd rather die i was yeah. thinking it was after friday yeah because if they don't if they if we don't know that they would rather die then the whole point of them being held at gunpoint is like well why wouldn't they just tell her yeah and they when they get to there that's the first time you really get a good look at the parents too like when they're young and so that's where you see their other mutations because they said they had to add other stuff to the parents because if they just had one eye then why wouldn't they have gone to the surface yeah. too so we have the sideways mouth for her dad the dad has a sideways mouth and the mom has tentacles which they said doesn't really work with the first appearance because she didn't have a tentacle arm but they're like eh. Eh. <laughs> yeah they were just like we needed something well he said they think originally they gave her just to the left arm tentacle but they didn't like it because of the like the non-symmetry so they just decided to give her both tentacle arms I mean, she she got a secondary mutation. It happens. I see it in X Men all the time. Well, except it already happened when Leela was born. Oh yeah, yeah. She 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 receded a little bit and then got mutated again. Yeah, Leela's yelling and screaming at them, and she eventually comes to the conclusion that she thinks they killed her parents when they came to Earth, and they admit to that ultimately. Yeah. And then right when she's about to shoot them, she like cocks the laser gun and it's like charging up. And then Fry just like falls through the roof. And he's like, thanks, Bender, with a bunch of like the glowing noses, too. Yeah, implying that Bender just dumped him down yeah. like he did all and the other crap. He's like, they killed my parents. He's like, close. And he pulls back their hoods. He's like, they are your parents. Because the, the note couldn't be translated, but it revealed that it was made out of recycled toilet paper, which was a common paper in the sewers. Yeah. So then they're saying how Leela must hate them. But she's like, no, all I ever wanted was parents. And she like starts to cry and hugs them. And then it starts to rain. But it zooms out and you see it's Bender pouring a spittoon down because earlier there was a little scene where he said he got a, the contract to empty all the spittoons from Little Italy. Yep. And then there's like a nice little montage at the end where it's just the parents like watching over her through her life, even if she didn't know about it. Yeah, it's like the um the the dog montage, which we haven't gotten to yet. Yeah. Kinda. But it's a similar idea of like, hey, we're gonna wrap this up with a quick little song and a nice little feel good moment sort of thing. Yeah. But it shows them, you know, like leaving her birthday gifts and tucking her in and stuff like that. Catching her before she fell down the stairs. Yeah, small when she was baby. a baby. <laughs> and that's the end of this one. I, I, like, this isn't the funniest one, but I do think it's good. It's got a very solid plot. So, for me, I gave it two ratings because if this is, like, my first time watching it, all of that, like, lore stuff would probably have a little bit more weight than me yeah. rewatching it for the seventh, eighth, ninth hour time. So, I'm, like, thinking if this was my first time, it's probably, like, an 84-ish. Yeah, I gave it an 87. Yeah, and then thinking now, like, rewatching it again where, like, even though they they show the twist early but even still like there's less weight to the fact that it should be it's like it's like an 80 okay like i don't think it's super funny 
Yeah, it's not, like I said, it's not the funniest, but I think it's because there actually is a lot of plot to, like, cram into 20 minutes. Yeah, I mean, I, I still don't know if I agree with the reveal being earlier, because I know what you said, oh, it allows them to create better jokes. That's what jokes, they said, yeah. But they didn't even really do any jokes with the parents. I was kind of thinking that, yeah. Like, there's a little bit at the end. I mean, I think part of it is it would have been pretty obvious. They're doing a whole episode about her parentage. Yeah. And then there's these mysterious people in the sewers. Yeah. Like... But, I mean, you could have had, like, the facial reveal at the end. Like, you could have done something, maybe. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Because that's, like, I was when I was rewatching. it, it's, like, they revealed it at pretty it's much the, the, the first starting. Act. Like, it's right at the starting, seven minutes into the episode. And you're, like, oh, so there's no suspense now for the next 12 minutes of this episode, right? And, I don't know. Maybe it didn't work for me. If, if they would have done more jokes referring to that irony throughout the episode, but they didn't really do any jokes about it. No, not really. Like, what jokes did they do... Like they they didn't so yeah I, I don't know that maybe hurt it a little bit to me but yeah eighty or eighty four depending if it's your first or continuous viewing no that's fair yeah well what'd you do for your favorite joke I didn't have one no I think this was also the first time where after I finished watching it I sat with my notebook that I'm just recording these things and so I don't forget them like See, nothing funny. stood out to me because I did have two that I kind of thought about so the one that I didn't take that I was thinking about was the the dings okay when it does the two more rapid dings and the professor's like shake of his head no yeah. I like that quite a bit. And then there's one that I do actually like always really like it always makes me laugh a lot, which is when she closes the thing and Fry's like, what are you doing? And then Bender in the back, she's like, I'm getting on the bus. Just like, I'm not waiting for you fools. Yeah, that's pretty I'm good. I'm going. I don't know. Nothing. No jokes just really stood out to me. They were all just like, eh. Okay. Like, like you said, I don't think this is a, a very funny episode. It's not. It's not one of the funniest ones no, for sure. It's a good episode, but I don't think it's very funny. And so I essentially was watching it as like almost like a plot driven drama. I mean, it's one of the more, like, emotion-driven episodes, right? Like, and they even talked about that in the commentary. David X. Cohen was saying they're... This was after, like, they filmed the commentary after they'd been canceled and all the episodes were out. Yeah. And he said this was voted number four by the fans as the most emotional episode. Yeah, I can understand why that would make sense. Yeah. So, I mean, it was up there for that. Like, I think that's more what it gets recognition for. I guess if I had to have a joke, just because in case people are wondering, <laughs> it would be when uh, when the fry says, I'll go back for the dirt on the other kids. Yeah, that's pretty good, too. But, like, I don't know. I just, I didn't think this episode was very funny. I thought it was just a, a good story episode. But, yeah, it, I would say this current viewing, I gave it an 80. Let's okay. just flat out. This was an 80 to me. All right. Which, yeah. I mean, that's still good. It's still one of those episodes where if I never saw it again, I would not be upset. Yeah. Well, everyone can let us know what they thought of this episode. Uh, and you can join us next week when we review Where the Bugalo Roam. Oh, back up to Mars. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the first time to Mars. Is this the first time we've been to Mars? Yeah. Other than Mars University. Oh, that's you're right. Never mind. Mars <laughs> University. Yeah. That it's a very one. different Mars. It is. Mars University makes Mars out to be like a normal place. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see you all then. Bye. <laughs>